there, it's me, Rama, and this is a video about new features in the Rama save system. And first stop is edit project settings, and now we're going to go down to look. There's this thing here, Rama save system settings. Now, if you wanted to use a custom save engine actor, what the save engine actor is, is when you initiate a saving process, this actor is used to basically run a timer and enable asynchronous saving as well as handle level streaming which when you're saving levels and loading and unloading is occurring it's not going to be synchronous with the, with the game thread you have to wait for the level to fully load but I also do true multi-threading using this sector for the async save feature if you choose to enable it however that's all previous the new feature is this thing called Save All Properties Marked as Save Game and this has a secondary benefit of also enabling support for having multiple actor subcomponents that have the same property name. Before they had to be unique but now they don't. So what is this save game thing all about? This The reason for this video is not so much a pretty example as it is the fact that we really need an easy way to see how this is done because frankly it's not very intuitive how to access the save game thing so I want to show you and we're gonna make an example so uh, to whatever is already existent I'm gonna add something new so we're going to add a new variable and it's gonna be a string in honor of our presentation we're gonna make it say something nice so presentation video yeah, that's right. Okay, let's compile that. And we're going to call it something fun, like butterflies, because you know you have to. All right, and now here's the interesting part. Before, in previous versions of the Ramasay system, you absolutely had to then go over to your component your Rama save component and you would need to add it to the list and say this right because it's at the actor level and then you you know it's actor owning variables but you actually don't have to do it that way anymore for these types of variables because you're creating the variable so you can define its um, tags it's basically you properties of the properties which is under here See how I say show advanced details? If you don't see that, you're not going to see save game here, ever. But if you say show advanced details, then all these additional options pop up, one of which is save game. You check that off. Now, it's the same thing as adding it to the list, except now you don't have to. I'm going to expose this as well. Okay, so now when actor loaded has occurred, I love sequences. I can't really survive without them. I think very much in sequences, not horizontal forever going on. <laughs> all right, I think it's because of all the C++ coding. It's very vertical. All right, so here we have presentation video. We're going to get it, and we're going to print its value. And you, adoring audience, get to pick the color, let's say red. <laughs> if red wasn't what you wanted, well, ask the rest of the adoring audience. Maybe that's what they preferred. So here we have, we're just printing out in red, and its initial value is butterflies. However, loading that from disk won't be very interesting because that's the default value, so we need to modify it at some point. That's what this insert is for. In insert, actually I want to keep that here, and I'll do it like this. Told you I like sequences. Um, in insert, I'm going to change the value to something else so that we it's like like you collected an item or some game event occurred. So this is going to be pre presentation. Come on, I can spell. It's hard to spell when you're being filmed. And I'm going to set it. It's hard to code correctly when you're being filmed. Set presentation. All right. And we're going to change its value to the adoring audience. Alright, so now we should be done. So notice I never added it to the save listing. And don't worry about those guys, they're um, hard to explain. So 
Now we're going to save and load, and the default value is in place in red, the adoring audience color butterflies, right? So now we're going to, I set the new value, the equivalent is if some game event had occurred. Now I'm going to save, now when I load it says adoring audience, which was the value that we loaded. The true test of the save system though is if you exit and then load again. Ready, one, two, three, go! Adoring audience! That means it loaded from disk. So I in C++, I am now finding the property that you want to save based on the fact that it has this um, special property tag, which is save game. However, you can't use, you can't set this property tag for properties that are not yours. For example, this is what those little um, bulbous things are for. These little white guys. See these critters? They're static meshes. They're actually, I'm gonna, what was it called? Field of, can step up on, I think. I'm gonna change, I happen to be testing can step up on as the variable just because that was the easiest thing to do. So I've changed both of those to no. So under event graph, basically if you want to have, so your static mesh has properties, many of them, but if you have a subcomponent and you want to save its properties but it's a regular static mesh, you can't go in and set that save flag on a static mesh. So what are you going to do? You 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 have no access to these CPF, these are these component property flags. Component property flags? Whatever it is. Someone knows what that stands for, CPF. <laughs> C++ property flags. <laughs> so these things, how are you going to um, save variables that are part of the engine that you can't change the CPF status on? What are you going to do? Well, that's where my solution of using the list still comes in handy. The new system doesn't really replace the old one because now if you head over to the Rama save component, if you look at component variables to save, I'm now saving this variable. However, that variable name is the same for both of these little box creatures. They are, in fact, part of the adoring audience, I think. They are um, not something you can modify, and they are the exact same property. Previously in the old system, that would result in a problem because you, each variable name had to be unique. But if you have two of the exact same thing, both owned by the actor, you still need a way to save it. So using can character step up on property with with one second with this enabled, save all properties. It's one of the benefits of this change. I made it a single checkbox just because it just reduces the number of serialization paths that you might have. If you enable this checks box, it'll change your serialization path. And I do actually check for that and make sure to that old save files can be imported into the new version. It's just good to be aware of, but it should work flawlessly even if you were not aware of that. Now, we're basically done because I already had done this test. So if I say save and load, see how you see two no's. Those are the step up on properties. However, if I say insert, then I save. Now you see owner and yes. So where's that happening? That's over in here. And by here, I mean not where I'm looking. Where is it? Oh, component set test. So I'm basically taking each component and I modify their status from no to now each of these things. The reason this is a huge revolutionary breakthrough for which you should be jumping up and down for joy is the fact that these are two meshes with the exact same variable name and now with the new system they save. You may have never known this was not working in the first place or that it was incomplete because each variable name had to be unique and uh, well now you'll never have to worry about it because it's now been taken care of. And those are the two very essential features of this update. Again, you enable all of it 
from this one central location, including all sorts of other interesting things. I also added additional debugging. If you want to track the loading of each and every actor, you can enable these options. This is for physics, this is just a regular, and it applies to all components universally. You don't have to go into each one and say, give me more logging, please, if you've got like a hundred and thousand and ten lots of actors that you want to, you have all these components, so you don't want to check that checkbox for each one. This is global. It affects every component. This is also global. Every component will now be able to recognize save game if you turn this on. It works for component or actor variables. So let's say you've got a custom component like this. This is got a details panel here. And we want my blueprint. And we're so you see shield C. Well, if you say show advanced like this, and then you see save game here too, right? You could just check this now as well. However, with a component, you don't really need to do this because if it is a Rama save component, all variables are always saved. But if it's not a Rama save component, if it's a custom static mesh actor class, then you still need to check this off. So basically, when in doubt, check this off, but know that anything you put in a Rama save component, uh, extending that class is always saved. But if you say blueprint class and you say static mesh component, one of my favorite classes, you can't extend static mesh component base class, why not? but I can extend this. What do you mean I can't extend static mesh component? Preposterous! Oh well, let's do instant static mesh. So, ISMC, and if you now add a variable in here, and you call it var0, and if you say save game, now if you add this to your actor class, and you don't do anything else, this property will not be picked up on and saved without entering any actors list or anything. So that is the uh, huge advantage of using this flag when you can create the variables yourself. But when you can't, you can't edit this stuff, you have to use the variable list. So between variable list and this feature, you got yourself covered. I've covered you. You got all cases covered. Now I think I'm done. Let's just look at the pretty globes float around. Load and load, load. I just love them. <laughs> I never get tired of setting the velocity. So there we have butterflies. The reason it says butterflies is because we didn't yet change the data set. And now load, now load, now load. Okay. And final verification that it is in fact loading from a file the fact that it returns. So that is the complete demo. I hope you had a lovely time and I will be releasing these white critters in a near future release as a new plugin called Adoring Audience. Have fun today! Here's the my custom video software. Have fun!